everybody we will uh, go ahead and get started I see a few folks still popping in but uh, we'll maybe start with introductions uh, hopefully you all can hear me looking from our software like you can um, so yeah we'll go ahead and get started uh, again thanks for coming this is the RSWUS thought leader survey uh, where social fits into your new business program today and just uh, to start things off, I'm Lee McKnight Jr. I'm the uh, uh, Business Development Director for RSWUS. And if you're new to us, we are a full-service uh, outsourced agency lead generation and new business development firm. Uh, we help marketing services companies uh, exclusively find and win new business. So we help agencies by better positioning them in the market. Um, finding qualified leads, setting meetings, and ultimately helping uh, move them closer to closing business. So in terms of uh, a little bit of background uh, about today, uh, and just had a question uh, from Jonathan, the presentation will be available online. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Uh, quick background. Uh, the webinar itself uh, is, is taken from our first annual Agency New Business Thought Leader Survey. Uh, so, uh, many of you probably have uh, have downloaded that. If not, that's on our site in the resources section. Uh, and uh, Mark, our owner, that is his last webinar was actually uh, uh, was taken from that uh, report as well. So, just want you to know that we're we're doing some different stuff on this one, <laughs> not a not a redo, uh, but uh, had a lot of good info from there. So, just quick background. Um, Typically, we, our SW, uh, US, will generate questions for our quarterly surveys. Thought it would be different and helpful this time around to get some perspective from some of the industry's uh, leading agency new business thought leaders. And so asked each of them to submit questions you know, they thought would, would be helpful to agencies across the country. Certainly want to uh, want to thank them. Some of the folks that provided questions were Jay Bear, Michael Gass, uh, Paul Rotzer, Tony Micas, Tim Williams, Tom Martin, and, and Pete Caputa from HubSpot. I uh, really appreciated them providing those questions and uh, I think it turned out really well. Uh, if you want to tweet during the presentation and certainly uh, uh, would love it uh, if you'd like to, our handles at RSWUS and the, uh, the hashtag if you want to use that, uh, Agency New Business. And yes, uh, so as I said, we will be posting the webinar on RSWUS.com in the resources section and the slide deck uh, on SlideShare. If you do have questions during uh, during the presentation or the webinar, absolutely throw them out there. If for some reason I don't uh, get to them, uh, want to make sure that you know uh, in terms of the software that we use, we'll be able to, uh, to to get back to you if I don't this time. Because I do want to try to keep it. We're right at 40 minutes, right under there. So want to make sure that uh, you know we get you out of here. Uh, do appreciate the fact that you know you're here on your lunch hour, many of you, uh, or earlier. We know webinars, quite frankly, are a dime a dozen. So you know. Again, want to thank you all for taking the time. But second, you know, the goal today certainly is to inform, ideally, maybe entertain you a little bit along the way. But most importantly, after we're done, that slide deck I mentioned that's going to be available, I want to put and, and will be putting as many live links to what I'm going to be talking about today uh, into that uh, presentation. So, you know, you get something, uh, you know, after we're done today that ideally helps your, you know, your new business program. So what are we going to talk about? Uh, first, three reasons why your agency should stop using social for new business to talk about specifics on SlideShare and expanded LinkedIn profiles. Uh, won't go too deep into either of those, but we had some questions from agencies, so thought we would address some of those questions. And then lastly, some specific responses uh, to a few agency survey comments, uh, the open-ended comments that we got uh, in our thought leader survey. So let's jump in. Three reasons why your agency should stop using social for new business. Uh, the first one, why you should stop if you don't know who you're trying to talk to. In our survey, uh, Michael Gass, probably a lot of you, most of you I would assume are familiar with him, uh, helps agencies with their social media programs, does a nice job of it as well, certainly uh, very active in, in that space in terms of social. He asked uh, in one of his questions in our, our report, has your agency had success using social media to generate new business leads? 58% responded yes and that's a big jump from the same question in our 2012 changes in social and digital survey report uh, which again I'll be uh, linking to in the slide deck if you'd like to do some comparison um, in that survey not very long ago really only 37 percent of agencies found social successful in generating new business leads so a jump there to be sure 
uh, and, and overall pretty positive. But while more agencies are using social for new business in 2013, I want to say, you know, a lot of them still don't know how to use it. So an example of this is, is this common. Um, uh, and I guess I, I should uh, clarify, I don't want to say that this agency not trying to disparage them that they don't know how to use it but based off the comment here you know they say they continue to generate content for Facebook Twitter LinkedIn Pinterest other sites and the merchandise activity uh, on their site and elsewhere but they have yet to receive any value in return you know we saw some uh, uh, several comments kind of along these lines um, so while I don't want to say they're not you know they're not doing it right there's not enough information uh, we can you know make some guesses here as to maybe why why they're not seeing uh, value in that scenario. Um, I'll be obnoxious for a second and say, you know, what's that definition of insanity? <laughs> uh, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So, you know, would wonder in, in, uh, in I know I'm using them as a guinea pig, so if God forbid uh, you uh, are here in the webinar today and, and gave us that quote, <laughs> uh, you can, you can, uh, we can talk later. But ultimately, you know, maybe it's how agencies are doing it uh, in, in, uh, in regards to not seeing that value. So let's ask a couple of questions, you know, and this is what I asked that agency if we were having a conversation, uh, seeing why you're not seeing the value. First of all, who's reading your content? And, you know, while obviously, uh, depending on the platform, you, you can't know literally, you know, who, who exactly is reading your content at any given moment. Um, the second question kind of goes hand in hand. Who do you want to read your content? And we'll talk about this in the next couple of slides, but... Ultimately, uh, I mean, the answer is your prospects, your potential clients. Now, certainly colleagues and, and maybe friends, things along those lines. But if we really want to focus in, you know, why are you doing this in the first place? Uh, who do you want reading your content? Well, you want those prospects in the right sectors to be, to be doing that. So ultimately what you want is clients to read your social output and think, you know, I want them to do that for us. Now, I don't mean literally if you're, if you're an agency that, that doesn't necessarily handle social media for clients or create those types of programs. Uh, I don't mean literally do that for them, but it's interesting. I think some agencies uh, tend to look at social as just maybe an addendum to maybe what they're doing or, uh, it, you know, it, it kind of gets the short shift, if you will. Um, social is a representation of your agency, you know, the same way your site is, for example. And agencies sometimes tend to think of social, as I said, kind of apart from the rest of the new business effort. That, that's a mistake, really, uh, because what you want is whether it's on your website, whether it's a case study, whether it's social, any time a prospective client sees any one of those things, it needs to be a representation of who you are and, and, and how you might help them. So other questions I'd ask that agency, you know, what's the time frame for success? You know, is it realistic? Uh, you can talk about new business that way, big picture too, you know, to say, um, you know, if, if, you, if you've given it two months, three months, it's not enough time. Uh, especially when it comes to social, because you've got to take some time to, to, to get those those followers or have those uh, prospects that are uh, becoming aware of you as you're as you're pushing some of this content out. For example, also I'd tell them wouldn't ask, but I tell them you know uh, uh, don't stretch yourselves too thin. You, you saw in that quote uh, there were gosh I think four examples, four platforms alone they mentioned. And they said there were others. That's a lot, and uh, for all of you out there that are doing this yourselves right now, uh, you know you know. Uh, it, it can be tough, so I think you want to focus in, and we'll talk about this a little bit more too, on certain platforms that make sense. Well, I'll explain what I mean by that. But last, you know, is there a plan in place, you know, with defined parameters? So what I mean by that is, uh, are, are you looking at, or and I should say, you're going after the right sectors? You know, are you doing the research to find out where your prospects are and what they're using? Pretty simple to do that. So when I say research performed, look, we know none of us have any time to be doing copious amounts of, of research on our prospects. But what you can do is simply go to one, two, three of your or of your uh, prospects uh, websites, see what platforms they're using. You know, dig in a little bit with a couple of, with a Google search on on four to five of them, and see where they are. Um, it, it'll really help the effort. And ultimately, no matter what the channel, new business is not a, a, an overnight exercise, and social. Uh, is no different when it comes to new business. So um, I throw out that platitude, but uh, it, it, it's absolutely true and something that you've got to keep in mind. So number two, stop using social for your agency new business effort if you don't have a content plan. Uh, you got to say something, and better yet, 
stand for something as an agency. And I don't, I'm not trying to be too lofty here when I say stand for something, maybe in the, in the meaning that, that you might traditionally think of that. But in terms of who you are and, and how you represent yourself, again, whether it's social, your site, or, or any, of the, any given channel, uh, you need to show that prospect exactly what it is uh, that you do and how you can help them. So right about now, agencies tend to turn off uh, when you talk about creating content. Look, it's difficult. It's time-consuming. But it doesn't have to be. Agencies, quite frankly, aren't really being creative enough when it comes to new business. Um, I guess that's a harsh reality. And when I say creative, I guess the, the irony there, I suppose, the fact that uh, agencies uh, generally staffed with very creative people uh, uh, what I mean by that is not being creative in the sense they kind of keep uh, a lot of them are getting stale or they're not trying new avenues or new channels uh, to help with new business. Kind of same old, same old, if you will, I think with a lot of agencies. And, and it can be um, you know, detrimental to the effort in terms of morale, for example, and, and, and giving it the, the time that it needs. So the two biggest challenges when it comes to social, you know, time and uh, organization uh, and then coming up with the content. Uh, you know, you can say that about new business generally. And by the way, uh, we had Gordon ask a question. Uh, yes, this will be archived. Absolutely. Uh, appreciate you asking. We'll be on our site uh, in the resources section uh, probably in the next, next day or two. Um, so jumping back, we talk about uh, these two challenges. Let's take one at a time quickly. You know, it's a time and organization. I'll go back to... I'll, we're going to call it Lee's mantra today. <laughs> it's certainly uh, uh, not just my mantra, but starting small you know I've said this before in previous webinars if you've if you've been uh, been in them and talked about it in some of our blog posts um, our blog at agencynewbusiness.com uh, there's a, a little plug but look some examples try one post a week or, or better yet honestly one a month and a lot of agencies think one a month what is that gonna do for me well I'll tell you uh, potentially a lot if it's the right type of post have a simple editorial calendar. You know, who, who's doing this? Who's writing it? And quite frankly, the answer may be, it's you. You know, there, you may not have a team or you may not be able to get, and you'll see a quote here in a few minutes from a, uh, an agency who got pretty discouraged trying to, to have, uh, you know, four or five, six people blogging. Look, it's tough, but at the end of the day, it falls on you, right? So you can do one post a month, for example, and you got to focus on a core group of social media platforms too. I mentioned it already, so I won't beat it to death, but looking at things like Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google+, and I, I would say those are the top three that I would focus on in terms of success and what we've seen uh, with clients who've been successful. Um, I love this quote. The rule of five is that each and every content development undertaking should produce content assets that can be used at least five different ways. And, you know, as to the actual content, you know, don't make it harder than it needs to be. I will say that rule of five is great because when you think about, <clears throat> excuse me, when you think about, you know, all these different platforms and, and uh, that agency, for example, in that quote, I'll go back to again where they were using so many different ones, I would ask again, are you trying to reinvent the wheel for every platform? And if so, don't do it. You'll drive yourself crazy. So that one blog post you can use and convert, maybe even into uh, over the course of a month to 10, 15 different tweets, um, uh, blog posts, a Google Plus post, and don't be worried that oh gosh, if I if I if I do this, um, you know, I posted this last week. It, it's too soon. It's not too soon. Even the next day is not necessarily too soon. Mix it up a bit. You know, don't. For example, with Twitter, don't post the exact same tweet necessarily, although, quite frankly, folks do it. And as long as you aren't being obnoxious about it, don't be concerned because people, as you well know, are busy. And uh, they probably didn't see it the first time around. So what to write about or curate? And, and really, you got to do both. Uh, so if nothing else, to give yourself uh, room to breathe. You know, let's say you're doing that one post a month. Um, and we'll go into a little bit about kind of where to find some of these things. But curating content, you know, whether it's through industry leaders, whether it's through, um, you know, associations that, be, that you belong to or simple Google searches, um, curating that type of content and giving a, a, a small spin or a brief spin is a better way to put it on any given piece of news that's out there again shows your expertise and saves you the time but do always start with this question you know does the content you're creating or, or curating um show your agency expertise you know and 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 or you know sector knowledge and i would say what you want to be doing that at least 80 percent of the time and i got that heavily researched statistic um well actually i just made it up but um <laughs> in all honesty and, and being completely serious whether it's 70, whether it's 90%, and you'll see Michael Gaster when uh, throwing uh, this out here shortly, um, what you want to be doing is is not just 
posting random stuff, if you will. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't have your own personality. It doesn't mean that you can't uh, you know, inject some humor into it, quite frankly. And, and I, would, I would say that you should. But at the end of the day, you've got to show those prospects, look, this is who we are and what we're about. This is how we can ultimately help you. So where does it come from? Start with your own client experiences. Uh, you know, ab absolutely, I'd say uh, so many agencies talk about um, uh, we don't know what to write about, you know, and, and really take take your last project, for example. You can probably write 10 blog posts about that project, uh, different facets, and it doesn't mean you have to give away secret sauce. It doesn't mean you have to name the client by any stretch, um, but you can show the expertise. You can give even hypothetical situations if you're worried that you might be uh, you know, getting yourself in, in, in hot water for whatever reason. But that's a great place to start. Look, you're doing it now. You know, Show your prospects how you've helped. So in terms of curation, I mentioned on the last slide, do things like set up Google Alerts um, you know, in terms of, and, and I'll have a live link if, if, if you're not or don't know how to do that right now. I think probably a lot of you, a lot of you are using those. But it's a way to set up in Google where you have a, a keyword uh, like a particular sector, for example. And you want to get as specific as you can, by the way, because a lot of times you'll get these alerts. You can set it for daily or, or weekly, and you can get a lot of junk. So you got to be as specific as you can. You know, put the search term in quotation marks. Be narrow. Um, but do things like solicit, uh, excuse me, solicit uh, guest posts. You know, granted, that can be tough, especially if you know you're trying to have a like a prospective client do that. Um, that could be a lot of work for them. So at the same time, though, maybe clients or thought leaders within certain sectors, you know, they want to get their stuff out there, um, their content, you know, for SEO purposes, if nothing else. So give that a shot because it's less work for you. The last thing is, is and by the way, Jonathan, I did see your question and I'll get on Facebook and I will, uh, I will touch on that. Um, the last thing interviewing your prospects, and that leads to the next slide where Jay Bear asked a question in our, in our survey, you know, does your agency make an effort to interview its future clients uh, via blog posts or, or podcasts, and if so or not, um, why? So 76% of agencies said they did not. Um, it, before I jump into a little bit, uh, digging into that a bit, uh, I will say there was a little bit of confusion as to what exactly Jay meant. So I want to clarify that right now. What what he's asking is, uh, your he's, and he's he's referring to your prospects, not like current clients, because uh, some agencies had had said maybe that's that's what they thought that meant. But no, it's it's uh, it's reaching out to a prospect, I you know ideally, obviously that you want to work with, asking them if they might be open to an to an interview. Um, you know, one reason agencies typically give us for not having a consistent new business effort, said it earlier, it's time or it's the lack of it. Uh, interviewing um, a prospect that you want to work with is a good idea because it takes very little time, in theory. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can craft some more questions without pandering. You don't want to make it so blatantly obvious that, that uh, you know, this is, this is just a, a way to get your foot in the door. Um, offer to them, you know, Skype or, or an email interview. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, an email interview, you know, you're, you're going to give them the questions and, and that's going to take more time than they want. So you can also, of course, offer to, look, I'll give you a call. I'm going to give you the questions, you know, the day before and I'll be dictating your answers and, and maybe no more than five or six questions. But, you know, it's huge and it's, look, people like to talk about themselves. Also, just, and we know that, uh, again, but for SEO purposes as well, you know, it, it's going to get you noticed by that prospect. Uh, absolutely. You know, they're going to appreciate it. Uh, it it's, it's just a really, um, it's something different that not a lot of agencies are doing, and, and I would definitely consider it. Uh, I will say, and some of you are probably thinking, um, several comments after this question in our survey noted, look, how, how tough it, it, it could be in actually getting your prospect to agree to do that. And, and it, as I mentioned, taking the time to complete the interview. So, fair enough. Uh, but look, you know, granted, yes, you're, you're not going to be getting CEOs of, of Microsoft to do this for you. The bigger the company, of course, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But you can go down the, you know, the rung there, you know, and, and a lot of these folks uh, still who, who uh, will, will want to be interviewed uh, and, and have something that's going to, you know, be vital or at least be interesting to, to you or your prospects or other agencies. And certainly, as you might expect, you know, as you get in these companies that aren't the giants of the world, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier uh, to do. So it, it's at least worth a try. Look, it's going to set you apart from a lot of the agencies, as you saw, almost 80% who, who aren't doing that right now. So third, stop using social for your agency new business effort if you can't make it come alive. And I want to say I wanted to use a picture of 
Peter Frampton here, but our owner Mark used uh, one in a blog post last week, and I know all of you are watching everything we do, so didn't want to um, repeat. So no Frampton picture, sorry. But look, I, I like this quote a lot from David Newman Scott. You, you can buy attention, you know, advertising. You can beg for attention from the media, you know, PR. You can bug people one at a time to get attention, sales, or you can earn attention by creating something interesting and valuable, and then publishing it online for free. Um, look at the, and certainly from this, I know uh, David. I'm sure didn't mean this. You know, advertising, PR, sales, all important, all have their place. But as you might expect, the point being that content is is all important, can be certainly, and and, and I think there's there's ways, and we'll talk about here that that you can make it happen without. Uh, you're already not getting any sleep, but without getting even less. <laughs> um, you know, most of us discover where we are, uh, where we're headed when we arrive. You know, I think before you start. Um, thinking about content and thinking about social even I want to take a step back and say you know do you have the agency positioning uh, from that new business standpoint do you do you have it nailed down it may seem silly to say well duh but I'll tell you uh, you know Tim Williams asked agencies to what extent um, do you agree or disagree with the following statement which was our agency has a focused positioning strategy uh, designed to attract clients that want us for what we do best Interesting, over 65% of agencies said they agreed. No, that yes, we've got that positioning in place. You know, and I was honestly a little bit surprised. It's a pretty big number. Uh, and and uh, we talk to a lot of agencies every day, and uh, a, a good portion of them, you know, don't feel like they're there. So, I mean, that number on its face is definitely encouraging. One tip, however, and I won't get too far off the, the social, but it's important because it, it, it leads back. And specifically to those 65%, look at RSW, uh, we talk to a lot of agencies, and, and they often think their positioning is spot on <laughs> when it, it, it's not. And I, and I chuckle only not to not to be disparaging again, but it, it's just interesting. I mean, it, it it's very simple to make sure that your positioning is, however, uh, spot on, if you will. That's by having someone outside your agency or even outside the industry. You'll give their opinion. And uh, it's just as long as it's not someone that's so close to it, uh, or, or, or you know, within the agency, that they're not going to be able to, to take that step back. Um, but look, if anyone, you know, especially a prospect, certainly doesn't understand in twenty to thirty seconds how your agency is unique, or what type of agency you are, um, that's obviously it's not effective positioning. So you really should revisit that. Uh, uh, it, it really every quarter, I would say, and. It does not mean that you reinvent the wheel every quarter about you know at all, but revisiting that new business positioning, making sure it's easily understood and, and it's defining, uh, you know, looking at that with a fresh pair of eyes is going to keep you know your effort sharp overall. So what? Um, so now that your new business positioning includes social, you know, you 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 got it uh, set in theory. What next? Well. As far as social goes, look, learn what's important to your audience as far as making it come alive, if you will. Um, the fantastic piece of good news, <laughs> look, you already know it. Uh, why? Because you live it, because you're doing it right now uh, for your current clients. And I mentioned this earlier in terms of thinking about what the content might look like that you, you create even once a month. Think about those challenges. Think about why your clients are sticking with you right now and why they're working with you. And quite frankly, you can even ask them that. Uh, I know maybe that's for some clients that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, as, as we all well know, some of those relationships, uh, maybe you can't do that. But I think with a, a fair amount of them, you can. Um, take what you're doing now, then show your current prospects what you know and, and therefore how you can help. Some basic tips, and, and you'll see here, all these are going to be live links for those of you who maybe came in a few minutes uh, late. Uh, in the slide deck that's going to be on SlideShare here uh, the next day or so, um, going to be driving you to every, all these um, articles or anything that I've quoted that I'm talking about so you get, uh, you know, you're know you able to take your time with it or maybe show other folks that, that weren't able to be here today on your team. But a couple of tips from, from Michael Gass on how to write the perfect tweet. And while I'm focusing on Twitter and he is here, I would say this applies to, to multiple platforms uh, for the most part. But we'll go over these briefly. Obviously, you can see for yourself. But tell readers what you want them to do uh, in, in terms of driving them somewhere or, or, or in terms of uh, you know uh, where you want them to go, for example, uh, uh, to one of your posts. Make 90% of your tweets linked to articles, blog posts, pictures that relate to your message. That's the big part of that. Using a mix of headlines, questions, you know, facts, figures to drive those clicks and retweets. Um, use mentions and retweets to call out authors. 
um, you know, whether it's your prospect, whether it's an industry leader. I've, I've talked to agencies who think that, you know what, uh, that's pandering. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm comfortable doing that. I think, you know, it, it, social and, and the way that we use it today has been around long enough. Absolutely, you can do that as long as you're not obnoxious, you know, and, and doing it overly to the point where you almost become a stalker. Uh, don't do that. But leave 20 characters, specifically when it comes to Twitter. Um, so that uh, folks can retweet your content. And I'll have to say I'm guilty of that sometimes still, where I don't leave enough space and then folks can't add a comment and you want them to be able to get their own spin on it, certainly. And then using your own voice. You know, in a professional way, you do want some personality. You know, um, you don't just want to retweet things all the time. You know, use a little bit of, uh, of what you know and who you are. Um, let's look some specifics. I just thought these were interesting and, and, and we'll, we'll run through these. But uh, Pinterest, for example, avoid human faces, uh, which I did not know. Images without human faces get repinned 23% more than images with faces. Um, look for red. Uh, images that are predominantly red or orange see twice as many repins as other images. And I thought this slide was nicely reflected that by accident. But uh, I mean, of course, you can get out of control with that. Um, you know, we're not using every post in, in orange or red, but uh, just thought that was interesting as well. And, and all this, by the way, comes from, from PR Daily. Uh, Facebook, and here Jonathan asked me a few minutes ago, why was Facebook not listed in those top three social platforms? Uh, I'll tell you this, um, and, and I, I know, or I'm sure, I should say, one of you out there could contradict me, but I think Facebook on its own is not not the greatest for new business because it's not as direct as Twitter. Uh, you know, and LinkedIn being the more of a professional network. Google Plus, you know, I include that more for SEO these days. Just Google being the monster that it is, uh, I, I think you you are remiss if you aren't starting a page for your agency and at least posting um, you know blog posts or things that are related to the industry so you you're in that mix. Facebook has its place, I think, m more. And some of you heard me say this before. I think, and and for ourselves, you can see RSW US's Facebook page and I, I in fact Jonathan, I'll, I'll link to that and some other um, agencies I, that I think do a good job with it um, it's great to show the personality it's great to show you know what and, and maybe some of your thought leadership too but uh, that's a place to me anyway where you post your pictures of the office party and outings and maybe things that more uh, are, are, are more humorous and funny and um, you know outwardly uh, uh, maybe over the top but ultimately I think for me, just Facebook and I think agencies that I've talked to hasn't been a big driver of new business. So that hopefully Jonathan answer your question. But real quick here, be positive. Um, positivity is more appealing and inspiring. Uh, also providing links, and I guess again, um, I hope everyone knows that. But you know, even I forget sometimes. Uh, you know, you want to drive fans to your website. After all, you know, Facebook exists to support your business, and, and, and you know, if that is indeed what you're using it for. Google Plus uh, tag people. You know, when appropriate, tag brands and people in your posts to encourage them to comment. Uh, you know, or engage with you. Uh, include large images, uh, which I thought was was interesting. Reminder: Don't settle for the tiny photo that automatically appears when you include a link. Uh, upload a larger one to grab people's attention. I will have a link to this. Uh, all that info, those last three slides are all in this infographic. Obviously, this is not the whole thing, but uh, you wouldn't be able to see any of it at that point. But um, it's it's pretty 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 cool, and I think you might be interested in it. So we'll have a live link uh, to that from PR Daily too. Uh, but might some some other good reminders there, just overall for every uh, all the major platforms, I should say. Um, then there's this from Digiday, and I'll be quick in reading these because again, you can read it for yourself, but. They had it inside the best agency Twitter feed, uh, was the name of the post, I should say. And uh, they say that Twitter, it, agency Twitter accounts, you know, often really dull. And instead of using the opportunity to poke fun at the day's news or amuse followers, uh, the majority of agencies choose instead to tweet links to press releases or unseemly praise of clients or to retweet ad age articles. Um, I'm going to finish the second part of the quote, and then, but you know, there's nothing wrong with tweeting links to press releases or any of the things they're talking about. Ad age, for example, um, they do have a point uh, in terms of being a little more creative. Finishing out the quote, though, they talk about a handful of agencies that have taken a different approach, uh, have opted instead to publish content to their followers, who are in fact real people. Um, you know, they might be interested in. So, the top talent, a lot of agencies are doing the tweeting rather than pushing it off. Uh, on the PR department. They gave some examples and I wanted to share those with you and then comment. Uh, but we've got um, RGA, uh, I actually like probably my favorite here, but I'm okay with brands pretending their Twitter accounts have been hacked. If they're okay that I pretend to read their Twitter accounts, <laughs> pretty good. Um, another one, um, it's sweltering the day, so we have a Christmas tree in our meeting room, obviously. Um, thought that was 
certainly at least humorous. <laughs> and then from Red, uh, excuse me, Red Square Agency, um, the more photos of dogs and bicycles on a website, the more creative the agency, which of course is true. Got to have the dog. If you don't, you need to go and get one right now. Um, look, yes, all these humorous, of course, um, uh, at least I, in theory you think so. You know, does that help your new business effort? Partly. Why do I say partly? Um, look, along with humor, which absolutely, as we all know, uh, it can be extremely uh, not only helpful to your effort, but um, can make people you know stick around uh, in terms of followers and and those those that are um, you know watching what you're doing. But along with humor, look, make it personal and make it pertinent as well. And you saw the names of those uh, some of those agencies. They're bigger agencies. They're well known. And I think that those folks can get away with tweets that are across the board pretty much like the ones I showed you. Um, they're not having necessarily to show some of that thought leadership or, or work maybe quite as hard, if that's fair to say. For smaller and mid-sized agencies, uh, you've got to mix it up. You've got To me, I would, as I said, that 80% would be more towards showing your expertise trying to help your prospects with information and absolutely inject some humor um, you know make it personal but uh, I, I would I would just be careful and, and have have balance there um, by the way I know Jay's uh, last name is misspelled here uh, the software wouldn't let me re-upload the slides so just want everyone to know um, aware of the typo that will be fixed in the slide deck so apologies Jay uh, but he asked does your agency publish content on SlideShare 80% of agencies surveyed said no that's that's a pretty big number um, gonna go into SlideShare a little bit because there were a lot of questions I, I do want to say unfortunately SlideShare is not paying me to do this so uh, this is definitely not uh, not trying to say this this is the end-all be-all but as you'll see here in, in the coming slides um, some real uh, advantages to using it so I mentioned some of these comments haven't heard any stories of new business dropping into an agency's lap because of it um, otherwise you need to keep your best ideas for your clients and not the general surfing public as with most social media channels here the second quote it's narcissistic superficiality and look at me over any real substance um, I'm gonna respectfully disagree with both of these I mean the, the latter in terms of, I think social media has gone long enough now that absolutely there's a ton of that look at me out there uh, that that truly it is just a narcissistic exercise but I think uh, it, it's it's been I think at this point it's been proven certainly I know at least in my own experience that showing some of that thought leadership you know having real human interactions and not just all chest beating uh, about me uh, can be extremely helpful to, to the effort and to, to new business um, I, the first quote I, again I respectfully disagree only because uh, keep your best ideas for your clients and not the general surfing public okay well maybe that's true in terms of yeah you don't want to give away some of your best and those secret st stuff if you will if that's the right way to put it but look I mean you've got to push that content out there for everyone to use does that mean you have to give away uh, as I said you know secrets or a particular campaign that you're working on that's not finished yet or something that's that you know that another agency God forbid could could pilfer uh, no, but you don't have to post things like that. What you can post, again, it's about the thought leadership. It's about showing them that you get it. So I, I think in that scenario, uh, you got you got to be pushing this stuff out there and giving it away, quite frankly. Um, so just why you slide share. Um, overall, the rise of visual content, and this is from a social media examiner post, which, again, I'll, I'll have a link for you. Um, it's forcing marketers everywhere to reevaluate their overall strategy. They say no longer can a marketing professional rely solely on white papers and blog posts, you know, to get that message to, to prospects across. And it's it's vital to include a visual element across all marketing campaigns. Um, SlideShare is an essential part uh, of any successful content marketing strategy, um, and I would agree with that. I, I think, in the sense, and I'll explain again why, but just a few more stats. Uh, it, it's 60 million monthly visitors. I, I have to be honest; I had no idea. Uh, before we had this thought leader survey come out and did a little bit of the research. Um, one of the top 150 sites on the web and 3 billion slide views a month. I mean, that's huge. So the numbers alone uh, make it at least worth your while to investigate SlideShare. Um, but the reality, as I mentioned earlier from, from the post, you know, because visual content is so critical, you know, the ability to embed SlideShare presentations across multiple channels is huge. And, and quite frankly, it's very easy. Um, that, to me, is why, that, that's really the main reason why you should, you should, excuse me, use SlideShare, because you can use it on every other platform. 
from LinkedIn to Google Plus to Facebook, and it's a very easy way for clients to be able to see that that visual presentation and the visual nature of your work, which so much of what agencies do is. Um, in case you still doubt, you know, a few other stats. When sharing uh, your offers, and in this case, whether or not you're truly sharing an offer, but whatever you're doing in terms of content, consider adding photos because visual content gets 53% more likes uh, than the average post, for example, on Facebook, of course, is what they're talking about here. Interesting stat. And then uh, publishers who use infographics grow in traffic an, uh, an average of 12% more than those who don't. Um, not a huge number, but it's still 12%, right? Uh, and then 94% more total views on average are attracted by content containing compelling images than content without. And it's true that coffee does does own me. Um, so keep those stats in mind, you know, as you're as you're thinking about content you're publishing and, and, and keeping it visual. And then the last one, and again, I'll, I'll have a link uh, uh, to this as well in the deck, but what it says there, the last sentence in the, in the right uh, corner uh, of, of the infographic, uh, SlideShare has five times uh, the traffic from business owners than other popular websites. So again, um, it, at least worth checking out. Um, uh, just a great way to, to use visual present, uh, representations of, of what you're doing. And it, these are two places I'm going to send you that may be helpful. Um, starter tips for the SlideShare beginner, and that's actually on SlideShare's blog, but then also on Social Media Examiner, how to use SlideShare to generate leads. So uh, if you're interested, two good places to start. And, and again, this is these are things that, uh, in terms of SlideShare, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get off the topic, but Mark touched on this in his last webinar. If uh, Let's say you have a presentation that you gave to a particular client. Um, that's a good base. Uh, for a prospecting tool. Now, granted, yes, you're going to take out some of the important numbers that don't need to be shared and, and some other things, but if nothing else, you can use that as a template, uh, and, and you're halfway there in terms of, of uh, you know, time saving, for example. So I want to go into uh, wrap things up with the responses to open-ended questions. The first one was about newly expanded LinkedIn profile pages. Uh, won't spend a lot of time on this, but I think it is interesting and certainly found a, I found a good example in terms of, of agencies. Um, Jay uh, spelled correctly last name. Uh, he had uh, he had asked a question that uh, several agencies also asked about. Uh, that is, uh, do your agency employees post multimedia content, you know, photos, videos, presentations, to the newly expanded LinkedIn profile pages? And it was about even in terms of who said they did, which you know was good. And and I think again, I'm not going to espouse uh, you know the merits of, of LinkedIn overly here. Certainly, it, it's it's uh, in terms of where your prospects are, uh, and I've said this in the past. Uh, this is the one platform where they most certainly probably all are, versus maybe some that are using Twitter and not, or, or any of the others. The interesting thing, if you're, uh, you know, if you're not familiar, and, and I wasn't either until uh, our, our report, uh, some questions. Uh, just had a conversation about including LinkedIn. Think it could be valuable. Uh, interestingly, some of the younger staff had mixed feelings, which I <laughs> find interesting. Um, you know, didn't know about the newly expanded uh, LinkedIn profiles, and then another one that said, you know, we need to learn how. So in that spirit, and again, I'm going to give you a live link, but I wanted to show you. And unfortunately, this is from LinkedIn SlideShare, and you can't. I apologize that you can't really get a good feel, but when you if you go uh, to the download when uh, of our slide deck here in the next day, day or two, as I mentioned, you're going to be able to see this. But what I love about this is, hey, there's a creative director right there. So what are the LinkedIn profiles, the, the expanded version that they rolled out here uh, recently? It's the ability to add... Uh, more visual content to your profile. Where before they were, you know, pretty, uh, you know, we had the LinkedIn typical. I'm sure you're all, all familiar uh, with titles and and basically just the, the the white spaces and text. And now you're able to add more images, you know, videos, resumes, presentations, and comments, and then like some other users. So I loved. And here's another uh, example. And again, I know uh, uh, blowing it up got too fuzzy, but this is uh, this creative director. Uh, showing some of this work, and now granted, you're not going to be able to put some things there, but I love the way this pops, a and this would be such an easy way to use content that already exists, and that perhaps you can modify without a ton of time uh, if you don't have 
uh, you know, I, you should make the time, you know, to do things like update your case studies and, and, and have those prospecting tools. But if nothing else, this would be a great place to send your prospects to, uh, to, to at least start the conversation. So, again, I'll have some live links where you can check that out. But I think that's something you definitely want to want to check out for yourselves and how to incorporate uh, these expanded profiles into, into your own. So, um, agency success with social media. And really what we've been talking about, right? But Michael Gass had asked, briefly describe your agency's success or why you lack success, you know, using social media for new business. And um, I'll abbreviate uh, uh, what, this, what this quote says, but essentially, I think we need to take both boxes. This agency said, on one hand, in the social stream, the fresh content looks alive on the front page of the website, so you know, we need to be doing it. But the outreach, uh, they don't, this particular agency, they don't think it's effective, or it hasn't been for them. You know, they say that we have, for a client, created content that gets thousands of hits a week, uh, a million downloads, you know, great feedback. It's, it's great content, according to them, uh, stories in NPR and, and Wall Street Journal, but it hasn't moved the needle on, on the sales for that client. Well, I got one word for you, and that's activation. And it's a word that we use a lot in terms of social media. Um, and it's something where if you're not activating your content, blow it up and start again. What we mean by that is pretty simple. And, you know, of course, we didn't coin that phrase necessarily, but it's one that the market and, and myself have used. Social media just sitting there, and we've got some blog posts that I'll, I'll link to in the deck as well. Um, you know, it's inherently passive. We've talked about this before, and uh, what I mean by that is, okay, certainly uh, there are some benefits from SEO. If you're doing a good enough job, that awareness, you're, you're slowly going to become, or maybe quickly, you're going to become the hunted uh, from your prospects. That's a great place to be. However, you can create all the great content in the world, all the great social media channels and platforms, but if you're not actively pushing it out there to your prospects, now you're doing it in a respectful manner, you're doing it in a way that shows a thought leadership and not just pounding your chest, but unless you're you know, activating it, as we call it, and you know, you're, you're, you're using those channels to push it out there and get it in people's hands or on their computer screens, you're not going to do yourself uh, any favors, quite frankly, it, and it's only going to go so far. So that's what we mean by activation, and that's what I'd say in answer to that quote, uh, are they activating the social media, or is it kind of sitting there you know, passively? Yes, maybe helping to a certain extent. Um, so that's a question I'd ask them and something for you to think about as well. And uh, so lastly, uh, inbound strategy, and this is where we'll wrap it up. Um, Tom Martin asked a question, please explain why do you or why do you or don't you have a formal inbound business development program? And then one of the one of the quotes, and there were several like these. You know, we had one, but could ever stick to a publishing schedule? You know, eventually just stop badgering people to develop the content. And, and this is what I was alluding to earlier in the very beginning of the webinar, where look, it's tough to get people, to, you know, on a content on a, uh, on a content schedule. Now they say here, morale improved and inbound leads stayed the same, zero, which you know, ouch. Um, look, I, I think when it comes to inbound, and, and as I said, here's where we're going to wrap it up. Inbound is a buzzworthy year for agency new business, and not, not just for new business, but it's all you hear about, uh, really, and certainly what, all, what we hear a lot about. It absolutely has its place, but I think you look at this quote, my fake plants died because I did not pretend to water them. Um, I think oh, when it comes to inbound, um, it, it, it can become, it can feel kind of like this, a little bit absurd, a little bit um, nonsensical. Uh, to be more specific, I think agencies get scared, and, and understandably so, when you look at some of these larger platforms, um, and, and that, that work very well, mind you, uh, you do have to spend some money, and you do have to produce a lot of content for, for those more often than not, but you really, what you've got to do is, again, start small. And you got to know what you're getting into. So if you're thinking about one of these platforms, and I just talked to an agency principal about it last week, that we're considering going uh, and using one of these, one of these large, well-known uh, inbound platforms. Um, do they work? Absolutely. And great customer service, of course, but know what you're getting into in the sense of you got to produce a lot of content and you're going to spend some money. So look, the bottom line, even if it's abbreviated and if it's in-house, you do need it. You do need some kind of an inbound component. But this all, and we'll finish the circle here, it all goes back to what we've talked about in, in, in the last uh, 40 minutes or so, and that is, um, yes, start small, but look, get a plan and stick to it. But you don't have to have a post a day or 30 tweets a day. Um, don't think that one post a month isn't going to be enough. Ideally, would you, would, would you do one a week? Would you have a team and you're doing maybe two or three a week? Sure. But we're not living in that perfect world. So that's what we'd say is ultimately um, just consider those options and you got to stick with it. Um, all things that you know 
So I apologize for the platitudes, but I think as far as social goes overall, um, it, it can be an important component of what you're doing in new business, but you got to give it the time it needs and um, you know, you got to be patient. So hopefully um, overall, this has been helpful for you. The webinar is going to be on our site. Uh, interestingly, right now we're having some issues with uh, the JavaScript a coding, uh, you, that's about as much as I know. But uh, so literally right now, if you go to our site, you're not going to be able to webinars. You can get to, but some of our, our resources and things of that nature. So if you're if you haven't been able to download this report yet, uh, and you can email me Lee at rswus.com, and I can I can uh, give you uh, that report, send you a link that we can uh, get directly from our server. We're going to have that. Uh, I ideally going to have that problem fixed here um, uh, this week. So apologize for that. But the slide deck will be on SlideShare. Uh, uh, by end of day tomorrow with those live links I mentioned. Again, thanks so much. And uh, I will say lastly that uh, our owner, Mark, ha is in the process of doing some um, some Skype uh, interviews with the thought leaders that were in our uh, survey that provided the questions. And we're going to be pushing those out in our blog, that agencynewbusiness.com, uh, and uh, getting a little more into some of the, the questions and the answers from agencies. And, and we're pretty excited about that and, and, and certainly thank them for, for doing that. But uh, hey, have a great rest of the week, and good luck uh, with the new business. Thanks.